we got a call from, that's right, the publisher. They wanted to put out a, a book just of Batman. It was appearing once a month in Detective Comics. So the first issue of Batman was scheduled as soon as possible to take advantage of what they thought might be a temporary popularity of the new strip. And all of a sudden we needed four stories to fill the first issue. And one story for Detective Comics, normally, and another story that appeared in another magazine, World's Finest. So the writer, Bill Finger, was overwhelmed with having suddenly to turn out four scripts at once. And uh, it was an impossible task. Bill was the, uh, undoubtedly one of the best writers the genre has produced, but he was a very careful craftsman, and he wasn't fast. So he, and particularly with a new assignment like that, he wanted to do his best work. So it was overwhelming, so I immediately proposed, and they knew my ambition was to be a journalist, had already written a lot of creative stories for Columbia, and that they had seen him, so I immediately volunteered, well, I'll do a story. Well, that was great. Uh, that would relieve Bill of one, third, one fourth of the, the book, uh, the upcoming book. So that very night, I was so excited to hear I was gonna get a chance to, not even drawing Batman now, but I could write my own story, which I really wanted to do. And uh, so I had to create my own story. I immediately thought, and thinking back about that night over and over again, uh, trying to recreate my thought process. And I almost immediately, being I had already been studying the classics, and I knew that every great hero in literature had a protagonist, you know, from Sherlock Holmes and Moriarty, even to the Bible, David Goliath. And Batman did not have, as we just said, all the gangsters, the villains were ordinary gangsters. And uh, so I wanted to create a villain that was worthy of Batman. So I had to visualize him. And uh, so in visualizing him, that's when I came on the image of the Joker playing card. And why everything in your life fits in somehow. Uh, in my family, my, one of my brothers was a champion bridge player called a contract bridge. And they get master points like a chess player. And my mother was an accomplished uh, bridge player also. And I played fairly, but I liked the game. So I, well, there was always a deck of cards around the house. So it was quite naturally for the first thought in my mind when I was thinking of a name and I thought of the Joker, I immediately thought of the Joker playing card. And I thought, that's great. I, that's just the image I wanted of a clown, of a jester, but yet somebody, someone that had an ed edge. And I think it was just... Uh, um, just by luck, that image, I think, has a certain edginess to it that most people don't recognize. For example, the Joker, the clown, uh, can be feared by children, you know, are very fearful of the clown image, and many, many adults also. Um, uh, there's even a phobia named for it, uh, the, the fear of clowns. And uh, so it had that advantage. And also, uh, uh, the image is kind of um, edgy. Uh, uh, it's uh, evocative of a, a lot of things uh, uh, that you can associate with clowns and jesters. It also has a great history. Of course, jesters go back to medieval times. Shakespeare's characters uh, and all plays often had a clown or jester in it. So it is a great tradition. And playing cards are so prevalent, and the, the image of the jester evolved over the years. It was different in the early days. So it was just a very fortunate combination. You can't play it on things like that. Uh, uh, that finally resulted in the Joker. So I sketched out the first sketch of the Joker, which I still have, fortunately, was tucked away somewhere, and we recently dug it out for an ex traveling exhibition on the Golden, so-called golden age of comics. 